subsidies, you can still apply for one instead of a temporary resident visa. We will give you the links to apply at the end of the presentation. Note that although the study permit may be optional, it is possible and sometimes even recommended to apply for one. We will discuss later in this presentation the benefits of holding it. Now, let's go through the application process. There are the main three steps to apply for a study permit. Once you have selected the school at which you have been admitted, for your submission to be considered complete application, you need to submit upfront the following documents. A letter of acceptance from a DLI in Canada. Usually, this should be an unconditional LOA. However, we will accept a conditional LOA if you can also demonstrate, as in provide evidence, that you meet the conditions in your application. You should not submit your application until you have evidence to demonstrate that you meet the conditions as stated on your LOA. Study Permit Application Forms we don't have an application unless you have submitted all of the required forms. There is the application for a study permit and the family information form. If you are less than 17 years of age, you need to also submit a completed custodian declaration to indicate who will be caring for you when you are in Canada. And if you decide to use the help of anyone with your visa application, you should also declare this by submitting the use of a rep form. You also need to pay the study permit processing fee and the biometric fee. This means a fee received for a total of 235 Canadian dollars. Visa application photographs and a copy of your passport. We need your passport photos and a copy of your passport. While this lists the basic documents for an application to be considered, you should provide all the necessary supporting documents as well, which we will discuss in the coming slides. All applicants also need to complete biometrics, which is the fingerprint, picture and the biographical data. Don't worry, we'll tell you when and where to go. Some applicants may also need a medical examination. It depends on where you lived in the last six months and whether your program Canada includes an internship with kids or the vulnerable people. Once all those are completed, a decision is made and we issue you a visa and a letter of introduction. You are now ready for your trip to Canada. So, we have seen that the first step is to gather the documents to submit an application to our offices. What are those documents for most applicants? Official IRCC forms are available for free online. Our online system will tell you which form you need to fill out when you apply online. Your letter of acceptance from a Canadian designated learning institution please visit our website for a complete list. For those of you going to a DLI in Quebec, remember that you also need a Quebec Acceptance Certificate or the CAQ alongside your letter of admission. That process is completed separately through the Ministry of Immigration, Franchisation and Integration, MIFI of Quebec. Proof of funds. This can include Proof of a Canadian bank account in your name if you have transferred money to Canada. Guaranteed investment certificate or the GIC from a participating Canadian financial institution. Proof of a student or education loan from a bank. Your bank statements for the past four months. A bank draft that can be converted to Canadian dollars. Proof that you paid the tuition and the housing fees, a letter from the person supporting you financially and evidence of their relationship to you, plus the provenance of those funds. 
proof of scholarship or the bursaries which you have been awarded for the academic purposes. You will need approximately 10k Canadian dollars in addition to the tuition per year for a single person. Couples or families will require higher amounts of funding for the living expenses. You can use any combination of these documents to show that you have the funds to support the study program and your living expenses while in Canada. Language test results. The most common acceptable English language tests are IELTS, CELPEP and TOEFL. For French, there is TEF Canada and TCF Canada. Medicals. It is recommended that you provide your medical exam results upfront with your application submission in order to speed up the processing. You will also need a valid passport or a travel document. It's always best if your passport be valid for the whole period of study. That way, you don't need to renew your Canadian permits and the visas. You do this once and you are set for your whole stay in Canada online IRCC account as a result of delays in processing due to COVID. It's extremely important for you to know that your medicals must be valid at the time of travel. All medicals are only valid for one year from the date of the assessment of your medical exam results. You can check this date in your online IRCC account. If more than one year has elapsed since the assessment date, even if you already have a visa, you must complete a new medical exam. Otherwise, your visa will be deactivated. Note that if you have already been issued a visa, any updates to your medical results will not be available in your IRCC account. Instead, you should wait a minimum of six weeks before completing your new medical exam before attempting to travel to Canada. Before traveling, even if six weeks have passed, you should still check your online IRCC account to ensure your visa is activated and valid. To reduce the delay, we are working hard to associate medical exam results to the application so that we can get your applications finalized. We have updated the status of medicals for most applications. If you have done your medical exams recently and the status is not updated, please wait a minimum of six weeks before contacting us. Please be patient. Once you have gathered your documents and uploaded them to our online system, you may need to provide biometrics. Biometrics is a safe way to protect your identity and safeguard the immigration process to Canada. It is applicable to the applicants between the ages of 14 and 79 and is valid for 10 years. The process includes taking your photo, fingerprints and the passport data. In order to complete your biometric submission, you must pay the biometric fee of 85 Canadian dollars upfront. Once received in your application, you will receive a biometrics instruction letter, also known as the BIL, in your online account within 24 hours. You need this letter to be able to book your biometric appointment at the nearest VAC. VACs in India are booking appointments for all the visa applicants, including students. Please use the online booking tool on the VFS global website. Biometric appointments are free. You should not pay any additional fee to anyone, especially to unauthorized representatives. If an agent or representative claims they will expedite your appointment for a fee, it is not true. The only way to book an appointment is on the VAC website. Given the current pandemic delays, you may use the expired biometric instruction letters or the BILs 
to book a biometric appointment at this time. When using the VAC online booking tool, a visa applicant holding a BIL may book only one appointment. Attempts to book additional appointments are not permitted. While we are on the topic of VACs, note that the VACs offices have still not been able to accept in-person passport submission. The High Commission also does not accept passport directly. Attempts to submit your passport directly to us will result in the passport being returned and cause additional delays. Instead, you must use the VFS courier service by using the web form for passport submission on the VFS global website. I would now like to take the opportunity to talk with you about the student direct stream or the SDS. Once again, you will find this information on our website. In India, we are fortunate to have access to this program that allows students to get the study permits quickly. The SDS stream generally has a faster processing time and requires a specific set of documents to be submitted in order to qualify under this stream. Note that the pandemic has caused many delays in processing, including the SDS stream. Currently, processing times are around three months from the date of submission for the non-complex cases. IRCC is working hard towards returning to the normal processing service standards. To qualify in the SDS stream, you need a valid letter of acceptance, IELTS test results demonstrating 6.0 in each band, a receipt or the documentation that the tuition has been paid for the first year, including all the scholarships and grants, a GIC receipt for 10,000 Canadian dollars, your most recent school transcripts, a CAQ for the cubic pound students and the upfront medicals. Note that if you do not submit a required document upfront, your application will be moved to the non SDS stream permanently. For the non SDS stream, here is what is different. In addition to the IELTS, we accept other language test results like the TOEFL. No online language test results will be accepted. Instead of a GIC and paying a full year tuition, you must show liquid funds to pay for tuition, living expenses and transportation for the first year of school, plus an explanation and evidence of how you intend to pay for all of the remaining subsequent years of school without relying on working in Canada. Last but not the least, medicals can be done either upfront or you can wait until after you have submitted your application for IRCC to send you the further instructions. Additionally, we strongly recommend that you submit a statement of purpose to explain why you have chosen that program of study, why Canada, and explain your financial plan to pay for all your years of study. For India, we are well aware that the grade 12 exams are delayed and those students will not likely get their final marks until July. Submitting an application in July may be too late to get a visa in time for September classes. As such, we have made a facilitation measure this year to accept partial transcripts, missing the final semester and predictive grades if your LOA is condition unconditional. If your LOA is conditional, you must demonstrate how you meet those conditions at the time of submission of your application. Otherwise, your application will be refused. So, once you have gathered all these documents, what do you do with them? 
we have an online system where you can upload your complete application. It's extremely useful because you know that your documents will be sent to us directly. It's a secure channel for your personal information. It provides personalized checklist adapted to your personal situation. It's open 24 by 7 and available to you regardless of where you live or currently are. It allows you to pay your fees conveniently online with a bank card. We can send you the instructions to undergo biometrics or a medical exam. You can therefore reply the minute you gathered all your documents. You can also upload those that are available to you and hit pause until the next documents becomes available. There are also tons of answers, tips and pop ups along the way to help you when you use the online system. Now, if you decide to go to Canada without a study permit, you cannot work. You also cannot extend your stay as a student. Furthermore, your spouse or partner will not be able to join you as an accompanying family member. If you apply for and receive a study permit, there are privileges, but they depend on the nature of the course you take and the length of your program. You will have work opportunities if you hold a study permit. You are attending a post secondary DLI full time for more than six months and will receive a certificate, degree or diploma at the end of your program. For example, you can work for up to 20 hours per week off campus. You can work off campus full time during the regular academic breaks. Note that the school closures, part time studies or semester cancellation do not count as a regularly scheduled academic break. You can work on campus. Co-op internships are possible. In such circumstances, a work permit will be issued at the same time as the study permit. No additional application is required. Know that this is not applicable to language studies, general interest courses and preparatory courses. Your study permit also allows for your spouse and children to accompany you to Canada. Your spouse can apply for an open work permit and your children can apply for study permits. Note that if you are going to Quebec, your children will need their own CAQ. Children too young to go to school, including those going to kindergarten, do not need a study permit just a visitor visa. Families should apply together, although it is possible for the principal applicant to apply first, go to Canada and later be joined by the rest of the family. Once you have completed your studies, congratulations. It's time to celebrate and reflect on the result of all your efforts. If the Canadian lifestyle is appealing to you, you may want to consider applying for a postgraduate work permit or the PGWP. It's an open work permit, meaning you can use it for any kind of employment in Canada. Work experience provides a better opportunity to gain the language skills and the work experience required to apply for the permanent resident status in Canada. In addition, Canada has some of the highest salaries for workers. Furthermore, persons with the Canadian work experience are often able to demonstrate that they have the skills, knowledge and the critical thinking required to do the job. The of the validity of your post-graduation post -graduation work permit or the PGWP 
depends on the DLI in which you were enrolled, you completed, and the program of studies. Many factors come into consideration. Worth noting that you can obtain up to a three year post graduation work permit or the PGWP. This all depends on the length of your eligible studies. To be eligible for a PGWP, you must meet all the other PGWP requirements and have had a valid study permit within 180 days of applying for a PGWP application. You were a full time student enrolled at a DLI. You completed an eligible program that is at least eight months in length. You were authorized to work off campus without a work permit and did not exceed the allowable hours of work. If you reverted to part time studies between winter 2020 and summer 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this will not impact your eligibility for a graduation work permit. Additionally, online studies up until August 31, 2022 may count towards a post graduation work permit provided that you apply for a study permit before the start of your studies. Let's say you enjoy the Canadian lifestyle or that you like the job you landed after your studies. What now? Well, foreign students who graduated in Canada are most welcome to stay as permanent residents as long as they qualify for another type of permit, like a work permit. There are programs for those who are fluent in French and wish to settle outside of Quebec. Francophone mobility, for example, allows those who speak fluent French to get a work permit for a specific skilled job with an employer outside of Quebec. International Experience Canada allows youth from specific countries with which Canada has signed a bilateral agreement to get work permits to work and travel, complete an internship, among other possibilities. There is a pilot for those in the Atlantic provinces, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, or the Newfoundland and Labrador. There are programs under the various provincial nominee schemes, and of course, the main application system for the federal programs called the Express Entry. To be able to travel to Canada at this time, a student must be in possession of either an approved study permit and visa or a port of entry letter of introduction and a valid letter of acceptance from the DLI in which they are enrolled and proof of funds to demonstrate they can support themselves and their accompanying family members and prove that they are fully vaccinated and they should not travel to Canada until at most four weeks before the start of their classes. Note that even if a student qualifies as a fully vaccinated traveler, they must have a 14 day quarantine plan in place before arriving in Canada. The border services officer will make the final decision about whether or not you qualify. Additionally, 
all travelers, including students, are subject to mandatory requirements, such as the use of ArriveCan app within 72 hours before arrival. We strongly recommend that the students use the travel visor on our website to determine if they are exempt from the travel restrictions, as well as the most up-to-date information regarding quarantine and COVID-19 testing rules. So, as you can see, there are multiple ways to come to Canada. Today, we mostly discussed coming as a student, but even then, you have choices to make. It's normal to be a bit lost, and that's why we have a tool called the Come to Canada on our website. Simply scan this QR code or type canada.ca slash come to Canada in your browser. Answer simple questions and the system will take you to the right type of application. Here's another way to quickly review what we have discussed today. First, have you decided where to study? What level? College? University? If your DLI is in Quebec, have you begun the CAQ application process? This should all be done and completed before submitting your study permit application. Now think about your personal situation. Do you need a medical examination? Have you lived in a designated country for more than six months? Are you going to complete an internship with kids or elderly people? While you can wait for a medical instructions letter, you can visit our panel physician before you even submit your application to do what we call as the upfront meds. Know that there is a risk. Should your plan to study in Canada not move forward, you will have done this medical at your own expense without obtaining a visa or permit in the end. When you have your letter of acceptance from a DLI, your proof of funds, your language test results, your passport, CAQ if required, now it's the time to go online to submit your application. If required, we will send you either a biometrics instruction letter or the medical instruction letter. Be sure to complete this requirement within the provided time frame. All the info you need, where, when, it's all in the letter that you will receive. Once all the elements are provided, it's time for our officers to review your application. If approved, you will need to send your passport via the VFS Passport Transmission Service so that we can affix your Canadian visa. This visa comes with your introduction letter. There is no need to apply separately for it. All the info you need is the instruction letter in which we request your passport. Once you have your visa plus LOI, you are ready to travel to Canada. Simple and Protect yourself. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Never share your personal information with unauthorized agents, fraudulent websites, and scams. Websites may claim to be the official government of Canada's site. They do this to trick 
people into paying them money. There are easy ways to establish if the website or the email app from the government of Canada. Before clicking on any links, make sure you are accessing an official government of Canada website. Biometric services and IRCC forms. All of our application forms are available for free on our website. Likewise, biometric appointments are also free. You can and should book your own biometric appointment through the VFS website. If you use unauthorized agent to book your appointment, you run the risk that your appointment may not be legitimate and being charged additional and unnecessary fees. Telephone scams. IRCC will never ask you for any sort of payment by telephone. Any payment can be made through our website only. Unauthorized representatives. You do not need an agent to submit an application. However, if you choose to use one, ensure that your agent is legally authorized for immigration and citizen consultants, the CICC, a regulatory body for immigration consultants in Canada. All paid agents must be authorized. An authorized representative can provide you with the valuable tips to avoid paying too much money for an immigration service, as well as what you can expect. Note that you can also use unpaid representatives who could be the family members and or a trusted friend. Any person assisting you, paid or not paid, must be declared on your application. It's a serious crime to lie, to give false information or to submit false documents in your applications with IRCC. If you do any of these things, we will refuse your application and ban you from reapplying to Canada for at least five years. If you need to dig deeper on something we explained today, worry not. IRCC has an online help center on our website where all the frequently asked questions appear with the detailed answers. If you want to verify if a visa is valid or to report fraud, please contact the fraud email address on your screen. If you are reporting fraud in India, you must also report it to the local police. The other email addresses listed work covered in the presentation. If you can't find answer to your question or you wish to advise us of any change to your application, you must submit your query only through the web form system at the link mentioned on the slide. Please note, we will not respond to inquiries sent by email, through so social media comments or the direct messages. There is no need to send us your inquiry or the documents in multiple ways because this will just slow down the overall processing. With this, we come to the end of our presentation. For more information, here are the many ways to connect with us and to find information. Visit our IRCC website and follow our official social media accounts for genuine and up-to-date advice. There are some videos on the department's YouTube channel providing you with the more in-depth information. For example, what happens when you arrive in Canada? How to deal with an, with an authorized representative, biometrics, frauds, and so much more. Finally, if you need assistance in submitting an online application, again, 
please scan the QR code. This provides you with a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply online. Thank you for your participation and attention. Our IRCC officers will continue to address your questions virtually. Once again, please note that only the Q&A button should be used to submit your questions. No response shall be provided to the questions received in the chat box. Now, let me welcome one of our officers, Taylor Penn, to go over our frequently asked questions. The first question, uh, Taylor, we have is, is there any dedicated biometric appointment queue? And how will it help study permit applicants? Thanks, Shivani. So there is no longer a dedicated student queue for biometrics. However, BFS has an online booking tool through which all applicants may book a biometrics appointment. The current service standard is within five days. Please visit VFS Global's website for more information. Note that you should only book one appointment. Making more than one booking per person is not permitted. Thank you, Taylor. Another related question on biometric appointment. How can a student book a biometric appointment? So in order to book a biometrics appointment, all visa applicants who hold a biometric instruction letter, otherwise known as a bill, may book a biometrics appointment at a VAC in India using the online booking tool on the VFS Global website. Biometrics appointments are free, and the only way to request an appointment is through the online booking tool. Applicants must have a unique biometric instruction letter issued directly by IRCC in order to request an appointment. Do not use a local agent unless they are recognized by IRCC as an authorized agent. Otherwise, applicants may be at risk of fraud. To find out if the representative is authorized, visit IRCC's website. It is important that applicants provide IRCC with their email contact information and link their application to their online IRCC secure account. This way, IRCC can share important information and updates directly with them. To update the contact info, log in to your IRCC secure account. Thank you, Dela. Uh, another related question on biometrics, it states, can a student submit biometrics in another country? Uh, that's a very good question, Shivani. An applicant may submit biometrics at any VAC in the world. However, travel is not recommended during a global pandemic, since many countries may still have travel restrictions. Applicants may also encounter challenges if they try and courier their passport across country borders. So it is recommended that applicants enroll their biometrics and submit passports from within the same country. Consult the VFS website for country specific information. Note that we will not facilitate or expedite a biometrics appointment outside of India or Nepal. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, now the applicants are concerned with the premium services at the VFS uh, center. So they want to know, do the premium services at the VFS guarantee faster visa issuance? So the premium services at VFS only relate to the services at the VAC itself, such as the use of the premium lounge during your appointment. This has no bearing on how quickly we process your case or the outcome of your application. Thank you. What are the current travel restrictions for students going to Canada? That is.
or a port of entry letter of introduction, a valid letter of acceptance from the DLI in which they are enrolled, proof of funds to demonstrate that they can support themselves and their accompanying family members, proof that they are fully vaccinated, and they should not travel to Canada until, at most, four weeks before the start date of their classes. Note that even if a student qualifies as a fully vaccinated traveler, they must have a 14-day quarantine plan in place before arriving in Canada. The Border Services Officer will make the final decision about whether or not you qualify. Additionally, all travelers, including students, are subject to mandatory requirements, such as the use of the ArriveCan app within 72 hours before arrival. We strongly recommend that students use the Travel Wizard to determine if they are exempt from travel restrictions, as well as information regarding quarantine and COVID-19 testing rules. Thank you, Taylor. So another question that comes up on the same topic, it states, are there any travel restrictions for minor students? If a student is under the age of 18, they will only be able to travel to Canada if their vaccination status is either fully uh, partial or not vaccinated, and they are attending a DLI with an approved COVID-19 readiness plan, or attending a DLI in a province or territory that accepts international students. The IRCC website has a full list of DLIs and more information. Thank you. Now, how can one know that if they can be considered to be fully vaccinated? What is the criteria to know that? That's a very uh, pertinent question. So to qualify as a fully vaccinated traveler, you must have received at least two doses of a COVID-19 accepted vaccine, a mix of two accepted vaccines, or at least one Janssen or Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And you have received your second dose at least 14 days before entering Canada, and you are asymptomatic, and you use the ArriveCan app within 72 hours before your arrival in Canada to declare your mandatory travel information, and you complete the arrival test if selected. There are currently nine accepted vaccines, among which Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and the Janssen, Johnson & Johnson are accepted. But for a full list, you can refer to our website. Thank you, Taylor. It's indeed very helpful. Uh, the next question that we have is, have the direct flights to Canada resumed? Thankfully, yes. Since September 2021, direct flights from India to Canada have resumed. Please check directly with your preferred airline for the latest updates. Thank you. What are the options for students destined to a DLI which does not have a COVID-19 readiness plan and which is not there on the approved list? So, Students destined to such a DLI that are aged 18 years or older can study at any DLI provided they are fully vaccinated. However, students who are under 18 years of age must study at a DLI with an approved COVID-19 readiness plan or a DLI in a province or territory that accepts international students. Thank you, Taylor. If a DLI is not currently on the approved list, is it possible for more DLIs to be added? Ah, yes, it is. The approved list of DLIs is reviewed regularly and updated every two weeks. To obtain the most recent list, please visit our website. Thank you. How can students demonstrate to an airline that their travel to Canada is essential? That is a very good question. 
Students do not need to demonstrate to the airline that their travel is essential. As long as they are fully vaccinated or their DLI is on the approved list for minors, they should be able to travel to Canada. Students may provide the following documentation to board their flight. A valid passport, a student visa, and or your port of entry letter of introduction, and a letter confirming the start date of classes from the DLI. In addition to the documentation required to board your flight, you should also bring the following documents to facilitate your entry into Canada once you arrive at a port of entry. Evidence to demonstrate that you have adequate funds to support yourself and all accompanying family members while in Canada. Language test results. Proof of completion of a valid medical exam. These are valid for one year from the assessment of the exam. Evidence of where you'll be residing, both during your quarantine period and after. And how you intend to abide by the quarantine rules. This applies to all travelers in case you test positive for COVID-19 on arrival. Thank you, Taylor. The next question that we have is a very popular question among the class uh, 12 students who have appeared for grade 12 this year. The, the question states, my grade 12 marks will not be available until July. So can I submit my application now? So yes, that is a very popular question with the delayed examinations. If you have predictive grades and a partial transcript that is only missing the last semester, you can submit a study permit, including under SDS, so the student direct stream, provided that you have an unconditional LOA. If you have a conditional LOA, and cannot demonstrate how you meet those conditions at the time of application submission, your application will be refused. Thank you. What can one show as a proof of fun? Again, a very good question. So to demonstrate your proof of funds, you can submit documentation such as proof of a Canadian bank account uh, in your name, if you have transferred money to Canada, a guaranteed investment certificate or a GIC from a participating Canadian financial institution, proof of a student loan or education loan from a bank, your bank statements for the past four months, proof you paid tuition and housing fees, a letter from the person supporting you financially and evidence of their relationship to you, plus the provenance of those funds. Or proof of scholarship bursaries that you have been awarded for academic purposes. Assets and property will not be counted towards the assessment of your financial capacity. Thank you, Taylor. Question we have is about the student directory. If I'm missing a documentary requirement, such as the valid medical results, but all of the documents are available, can I still qualify for SPS? No. If you do not submit all the required documents under SDS, your application will be assessed as a non SDS application. Once an application drops out of the SDS stream, it cannot be returned back. Thank you. If the program has a co-op internship, do one has to submit a work permit application? Also a very popular question that we hear. Your LOA from your DLI must clearly indicate if your program has a co-op or internship component and if it is mandatory for graduation. If it is, a work permit for your co-op will be issued to you at the time uh, you apply for your study permit. You do not have to submit a separate application for this. On the other hand, if your co-op is voluntary, you will likely not have to decide if you, if you will participate 
in that placement until later in your studies. This means that you will only be issued a study permit and no work permit. If you choose at a later date to participate in your co-op placement, you can apply for a work permit from within Canada. Thank you, Taylor. Will one receive a refund of their tuition fee if their application is refused, even if they have already been studying online in India with the DLI in Canada? Thanks, Shivani. So we understand this is a big concern among applicants. However, DLIs are responsible for setting the refund policies. IRCC has no jurisdiction over payment or refund of student fees. Please contact your DLI to determine your refund options. Thank you, Taylor. Next question is concerning so many applicants and uh, it's related to the processing times. So when can one expect a decision on their application? Yeah, so this is another concern of my applicants. And there have been many service disruptions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So our published processing times are no longer accurate. IRCC is working hard to return to normal service delivery standards. And at this time, we are currently reviewing cases that are approximately two to three months old. However, this could change as volumes increase. Additionally, there could be complexities associated with files, verifications that are required, or missing documents that could cause further delays. We encourage all students to apply as early as possible in order to avoid being late to arrive for the start of your classes. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, we have a uh, next question on the passport. When should one submit a passport for the visa issuance? So the Visa Application Center is responsible for all passport transmission. The VAC two-way courier service must be used. You are not permitted to visit a VAC in person to submit it yourself, nor should you attempt to send it directly to the High Commission. Students are advised not to submit their passport unless they receive a passport request letter. Otherwise, it may be returned to you at your own expense. You can use the VFS web form, which can be accessed on their website, to book your two-way passport courier service only after you have received your passport request letter. Thank you. One wants to know that will their DLI be required to provide supporting documents to facilitate their travel? A very valid question in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. And interestingly enough, DLIs are not required to provide any documentation to facilitate student travel other than the letter of acceptance. Thank you, Taylor. So should a DLI provide an updated letter of acceptance stating that they are on the government's list of approved institutes? Actually, no, this is not required since the list has been published and will be updated regularly. Additionally, if you are fully vaccinated, your DLI does not have to be on the approved list for you to be able to travel to Canada. For minors who are required to attend a DLI with an approved COVID-19 readiness plan, in case your DLI is not on the list, you may want to contact them to find out at what stage they are regarding approval. Note that you will only need to provide an updated LOA if you are deferring your studies. Thank you. So can one work in Canada once they arrive, even if their classes are online? Ah, yes. Once the student and full time during regular academic breaks, school closures, part time studies, or semester cancellations due to COVID-19 do not count as regularly scheduled academic breaks. 
Students may also work in their home country should they choose to continue to study online from abroad. In this situation, if students are taking online classes from outside Canada, they not enforce the amount of hours a student may work. Although we do not recommend that students focus so much on work, but rather direct their focus to their studies. Thank you. If a DLI accepted online language proficiency test results for admission, can can one also use this for their visa application? That's a great question, Shivani. Actually, no, IRCC does not accept results from online language tests. There are no changes to the language proficiency assessment requirements. The recommended tests are IELTS for English, the TEF or TCF for French. For IELTS, we accept both IELTS General and IELTS Academic. And we also accept TOEFL tests. Note that all of these tests must be taken at authorized testing centers. Home or online versions of these tests will not be accepted. Also, test scores from Duolingo or any other online language tests are not accepted for any immigration purpose, including for study permits. Thank you, Taylor. So what if my IELTS test score is expired or uh, about to expire? Another good question. So if your IELTS score is expired or about to expire, expire note that we only accept IELTS results which were valid on the day the application was submitted thank you so what happens if one decides to defer their studies to a later semester that's another very popular question and something that we see uh, more and more often with delays caused due to the pandemic in that case, a new letter of acceptance must be submitted using the IRCC web form as soon as possible so that your application is updated with this new information. Thank you, Taylor. So if uh, one has already been issued a visa and they defer their studies, how can they extend their visa? So in order to extend your visa or to obtain one with a longer validity date, applicants have two options. First, they can submit a new study permit application with the updated information and new processing fees, or students can travel to Canada and submit a study permit extension application when there is four months remaining on their current visa. Study permit extensions are only granted to students already in Canada. Thank you, Taylor. So uh, we have another question which says that if one switches from full time to the part time studies, will this affect the duration of their post graduation work permit? That's a very important question. For the winter, spring, and summer 2020 semesters, when a student's status changed from full-time to part-time due to changes in the course delivery at a DLI as a result of public health measures uh, and the COVID-19 pandemic, their eligibility for post-graduation work permit uh, was not impacted. However, starting in fall of 2020, students who do not maintain a full-time status will not be eligible for the PGWP. Will the question, uh, thank you, uh, Taylor. So the next question we have is, will the application for the dependents submitted along with the study permit applications, should they be processed at the same time? Thankfully, yes, applications for spouses and children of prospective students will be processed at the same time. Students must provide financial documentation to show how they will be able to support their dependents in Canada without the need to work in Canada. Thank you, Taylor. Another related question on the uh, company family members. 
will the dependents of students be eligible to travel with them to Canada if they have a temporary resident visa and uh, the student already has a study permit? It's a very pertinent question. So with the amended travel restrictions, immediate family members may be able to accompany an international student to Canada if they are fully vaccinated or in the case of a non fully vaccinated minor child, they meet the exemption requirements. Accompanying family members will have to apply for their own visas and meet eligibility requirements for that type of visa. The fact that they are traveling with a family member who is a study permit holder will not guarantee them the issuance of a visa. A dependent may meet the travel restriction requirement in their own right, such as a minor child with an approved study permit going to school in Canada. Thank you. Uh, again, we have another question which says that on the same lines that if a student's parents have the valid Canadian visas, can they travel to Canada before the student to help him make the necessary arrangements? Uh, another very popular question. Yes, a family member with a visitor visa can travel with the student if they're fully vaccinated. They must meet all el other eligibility requirements to be granted entry into Canada. Thank you. So if a student has plans to apply for a study permit, can their spouse who is still in their home country apply for an open work permit at the same time? Is it possible for a student's spouse to apply for an open work permit if the student's study permit is approved and the student has already received a letter of introduction but not yet entered Canada? Yes, in this case, the spouse of a study permit applicant or a study permit holder, regardless of their travel status to Canada, is eligible to apply for an open work permit at any time. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, another very popular question that we have been getting from all our uh, on all our handles is can can one travel to Canada if their medicals have expired? But the visa is still valid. Thanks, Shivani. That's a great question. So your visa remains valid even if the medical exam has expired and you have not yet entered Canada. However, your visa will be deactivated if your medicals have expired, as these are only valid for one year from the date of assessment. You can check your IRCC secure account to determine the validity of your medicals and the status of your visa. Now, for applicants with expired medicals, they must undergo a new medical exam if they have lived in a designated country that includes India, Nepal, and Bhutan for at least six months within the past year. When making an appointment with a panel physician for a new medical exam, please request an upfront medical exam. Applicants should not make travel plans or attempt to travel to Canada until six weeks after the date of their last exam. This is potentially how long it may take for us to associate your new medical record to your client record. Note that you will not be able to see this update in your online account, so don't try to look for it or ask us about it. You must wait the six weeks. Applicants should also ensure that they are bringing the document they received confirming that they have completed this exam while traveling. This document is titled eMedical and it has the following information. A UMI barcode, the applicant's photo, personal details, and the date of the visit. Applicants should not send this document to IRCC as the panel physician who conducted the medical exam will send it to us electronically. Thank you, Taylor. So is the statement of purpose or the SOP mandatory? 
That is a very popular question that we see all the time. While a statement of purpose is not mandatory, we do strongly recommend that you submit a statement of purpose to explain why you have chosen that program of study, why you have chosen Canada, and to explain your financial plan to pay for all your years of study in Canada. Thank you. Does the receipt of the biometric validity letter or the BVA letter means that the file is approved? So the biometric validity letter only provides the validity period of the biometrics submitted. Although valid biometrics are essential for an application, there are other factors that are considered before finalizing an application. Thank you. What is the POE letter and how can that be obtained? 